Le Sahel, the Sahel area went through difficult droughts in the 70s, which then lasted for about 20 or 30 years. Researchers asked the questions, why these droughts during those years? What happened to cause such exceptional situations? The Sahel is uh, an area bordering on the Sahara Desert, one of the most desertic areas in the uh, earth, and rain is comprised between 200 and 600 millimeters per year. Not very much rain, and if there is even lesser rain, then this is going to cause catastrophic situations for agriculture. Droughts led to uh, water shortage, food shortage, and people died. And the researchers became interested in these droughts because they were an interesting phenomenon, but also because they had a huge impact on the local population. And the researchers wondered why this was happening in Sahel. Now, look at this graph. You see that for about 20 years, between the 50s and the 70s, the Sahel area was rather a humid area. Rain was normal. And then 1970, 76, 1980, 87, a huge decrease in the quantity of rain falling on the area, and the populations suffered. So why did we move from a time when there was rain on Sahel to a period of drought with huge social difficulties for the population? Two brilliant researchers, Jules Charnay and Joe Terman, came up with a number of theories in order to explain this phenomenon, which uh, actually happened not only in Sahel, but in other semi-arid areas. The problem was that the land use had changed. In Sahel, the land had been overgrazed, and because it had been overgrazed, herbaceous coverage had disappeared. You see here, this area is yellow. There is very little vegetation, and uh, therefore the land will reflect, the ground will reflect the solar rays. And there are also areas where there are herbaceous plants with a much lower Albedo, or as the uh, reflection capacity of the land. And uh, this has an impact on the forest, uh, for instance, by changing the uh, forest coverage, by turning uh, the forest into a grazing land or by removing the forest. This changes the albedo. In the semi-arid areas bordering on the desert, if we play with the ground temperature, we play with the circulation, the ascending currents in the atmosphere, causing a change in the precipitations in rains. Chani's theory was interesting, and Joe Turman's uh, theory was also quite interesting. And at the time, people started working on general atmospheric circulation models. Actually, the heralding the future climatic models. So they tried to change, they understand the model, they changed the albedo on the ground and they had a look at what was happening regarding rain. Overgrazing actually changed the albedo, the Earth's albedo, leading to a change of the rain on semi-arid areas in the model, confirming Joe Turman's and Joel Charney's theory. Here we see a situation where the model shows the variation, the rain variation, depending on the latitude between 0 and 35 degrees north in Africa. One can see that in a normal situation with an intermediate albedo somewhere in between a bare type of ground and normal vegetation, the rain quantity is normal. If we change the albedo with overgrazing, then the quantity of rain will decrease. This confirms Charney's theory. And if we push this even further by changing the albedo more substantially, by making it look more like a desert, well, the final result will be a desertic situation. But this was not enough. At the time, 
en même temps des mesures de euh, people had started measuring sea temperature with satellites so experiments were conducted changing the sea temperature or the ocean temperature especially in the Atlantic Ocean and it was found that by prescribing the same water temperature corresponding to dry years or to humid years, the drought effect could be observed in the Sahel or in other situations there would be a humid situation. And how can we explain this uh, variability from one year to the next and also the persistence of the effect because it lasted for 20 years between the 70s and the uh, 90s and before that there was a humid period and theories were elaborated interannual variability and uh, variability over decades could be explained with seawater temperature effects and vegetation effects, and then that both were probably contributing to a single result. So two theories, one an anthropic effect over grazing and the other one variability in the climate that, the man, that man was not to blame for. What is the current situation? Look at this graph. For the last 15 years, Sahel has become green again. This had been measured with uh, satellites and rain quantities are increasing. So we need to explain why this change. Again, there is a variability from one year to the next due to uh, the Atlantic Ocean sea temperature. But also some people thought, think that the uh, new vegetation coverage has played a role. I believe that the uh, humidity in the atmosphere due to uh, climatic changes with greenhouse effect has made a difference and that the increase in humidity in the Sahara has caused a monsoon that goes northwards. And the two theories uh, are contradictory. And if I may add my personal opinion, I'd like to say that the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere causes an increase in the vegetation coverage. And maybe in Sahel, this is what caused an increase in the, temp in the vegetation and increase in the rain quantity. So we try to understand the interaction between the monsoon regime that is um, now touching on Sahel and the meso scale circulation which has an impact on the vegetation, the humid areas and the dry areas in this region of the world and researchers are currently still working on this problem.